Good morning and welcome to our weekly word on this Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. I want to read to you from Hebrews on a couple different translations. First, the English Standard Version, which says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The message version gives us just a little bit different perspective on that particular text. And it goes like this. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race that we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. An exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, Go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility that he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. When I read that from the message version, it makes me think about tomorrow. Tomorrow's Veterans Day, November 11th. And I hope you understand what that means. It's a day that we set aside, not just to thank, but to honor all those men and women who have served, and all those who continue to serve to protect the precious freedoms that you and I cherish. My hope, like Thanksgiving or Christmas and especially Easter, is that we don't make it just a one-day event that we pause for a few moments one day a year to give thanks or to give honor, but that we wake up each day and think about those who serve and the sacrifices that they have made on our behalf. I stand in front of a wind window here in our church in the, I guess, parlor, cry room, whatever you want to call it, but there's a window here honoring all of those who served during World War II. And I do that for that reason, to honor, to celebrate, to remember those who have served. Because we forget, and it's so easy to do that, is it not? It's so easy to live our lives without a care, to take for granted all that we have. Oftentimes a day like this passes us by and we go on living our lives without even thinking about it, without even pausing, many people do, we forget that many of these men and women make tremendous sacrifices, often separating themselves from family, not spending holidays with their husband or their spouse or their children or their parents, not being there for your son's baseball games or your daughter's soccer games or dance recital. And what about those who have been injured in the line of duty? those wounded warriors, that person missing a limb, the one who has lost an eye or their hearing, or the person who still has shrapnel in their body due to an IED or other bomb exploding in their vicinity. Don't forget those who were in battle and survived when the person next to them was killed. Those things leave lasting wounds, many which are not visible but are emotional, psychological, and yes, even spiritual. As the message version puts it there in Hebrews 12, those veterans are pioneers who have led the way. They're cheering us on, it says. Well, what does that mean? 
the text tells us that we better get with it, strip down, start running and never quit, that we all have a part to do. We all have a place to serve. I have to share this, that I was both humbled and embarrassed a few months back, back in the spring. Went to H-E-B to pick up a few groceries. I was wearing some green shorts and a, a camo t-shirt. A hunting camo, not a military camo. And as I was coming around the corner of one of the aisles, some guy, a total stranger, just stopped when he saw me and said, Thank you for serving. Well, I was taken aback. My reaction, my immediate reaction was to say, put my hands up and go, Whoa, 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 no. Do not thank me. I have not served. Yeah, I signed up for the draft back in 1979 when I was a senior in high school. And had I been called, I would have gladly served this country. That easy mistake was a great reminder for me. What does it mean for me to do my part? At the very, very least, it means that when I see and when I recognize a veteran who has served, that I pause and tell them thank you for their service. That I honor them for the sacrifices they have made for me and for others. That means when that flag is raised that I stand and I put my hand over my heart that I honor these men and women, these pioneers, and thank God for their service. It means at a funeral when the military honors are given for that one who has served, again, that I stand in honor and place my hand over my heart. And while that flag is being folded, I remember the sacrifice they have made. While those rounds are fired, I may flinch, but I need to honor. And when that flag is saluted, I stand there in honor as it is lovingly given to that next of kin. That's just the start. The writer of Hebrews reminds us of another veteran. Jesus, who paid the ultimate price for each and every one of us. He willingly served where God called him to serve. He suffered mildly for the sake of all people. He went to the cross on our behalf. He died so that we might be set free, free from the bondage of sin and death, free to be forgiven, free to live our lives with meaning and integrity and honor. Yeah, it's very easy to take for granted also what Jesus has done for us. When we live lives in reckless, sinful ways, not caring for or helping each other out, being selfish and greedy, we dishonor everything that Jesus stands for, everything that he sacrificed his life for, everything that he died for. So what should we do? Verse 3 in the message version says it this way. When we find ourselves flagging in our faith, go over the story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility that he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls as we honor our veterans. May we remember the sacrifices they have made. As we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, May we never forget all that he has done for us. May we do our part to honor and to serve others as we have been so richly served and blessed. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we pause daily to say thank you and to continue to pray for all our veterans who have served, for those folks who continue to serve actively. May we honor them for what they have done so that we do not take for granted the blessings and the freedoms that we have. And Lord Jesus, may we never forget the price that you pay for our ultimate freedom from sin and the promise of eternal life. And may we give back our lives in time and service to you and to all who have served us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we depart today, just a couple of announcements and reminders. First of all, we do have a special called Congregational Meeting 
This Sunday, November 14th, following the 1030 service, will be about our building master site plan phase, one of that building plan, so invite folks to please come and join us for that meeting this Sunday following the 1030 service in church. Reminder also this coming Sunday, there's a special balloon release at 2 p.m. at Market Plots for any who's lost children, children of any age, adult children, infant children, anywhere in that, that spectrum. Special Remembrance that day, balloons will be released, biodegradable balloons. Pastor Rick McMahon will be leading that service that afternoon. Also a reminder, in a couple of weeks here, our Thanksgiving Eve services, Wednesday, November 24th, 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We look forward to you having you join us for any or all of those services. Remember, again, to honor all our veterans, to remember them in your prayers. May God bless and strengthen and guide each and every one of you for the rest of this week. Amen.